pangolins, the world's most threatened mammal on the verge of extinction. Over the past decade, Nigeria has played a key role in the export of pangolin products to supply the illegal wildlife trade, gaining a new reputation as Africa's primary transit hub for these contraband items. Adding insult to injury, data on pangolins is limited because scientists are still trying to understand the ecology of this nocturnal and elusive species. But today at Lufasi Park in Lagos, a pangolin is being released with a radio monitoring tag for constant data gathering. The radio monitoring tags that we place on the pangolin has both the transmitter unit and the receiver unit. The transmitter unit is a small, we prefer it to be as small as possible, so it's not a burden on the animal carrying it. We, it's, um, we put it on the pangolin, so wherever the pangolin is, it keeps transmitting. The battery of the transmitter unit lasts for about a year, so we have a year to work with. Then the receiver unit is actually equipped to receive different radio frequencies. So we just put in the frequency of the transmitter unit on the receiver unit, and then once the antenna picks up the frequency, it starts transmitting. And then the closer we get to the animal, the louder and more precise the beep until we locate the animal. The importance of the radio tag is for us to know the true success of the program. I am hoping, it's comical though, that when poachers see this pangolin with the tags, they would have this feel that they are being monitored and then they would let the animal be. I mean, who wants to catch an animal that has been marked and then before you know the DSS or something comes to your door to arrest you. So I hope that these tags on the pangolins will let the poachers know that their eyes on these creatures and they would learn to stay away. These tags are not cheap. On average, a radio tag costs about $350, the equivalent of about 200,000 Naira, making it difficult to imagine a situation where most pangolins in Nigeria are tagged. But this isn't necessary. By tagging just a handful of pangolins across Nigeria, scientists and conservationists are able to gather data that can help in understanding these mammals, such as the range size that they occupy in the wild, as the tags transmit periodic location information, and also their habitats in the forest, which can all help conservation efforts to protect these mammals. So this data that we hope to generate with these tags would actually be directly needed, first by local conservation authorities, but also we're transmitting this data to the IUCN, which is the International Union for Conservation of Nature, so that they would have accurate data on the white-bellied pangolins that we have here, and then we'll be able to save it together. In 2020, a Cambridge University PhD student, Charles Emoga, started tracking pangolins in the Cross River National Park. And the following year, Emoga and a team of conservationists led by the University of Cambridge published the first ever data-driven study on Nigeria-linked seizures of pangolin products. The sheer scale of the trade highlighted in this study is worrying. With over 190,000 kilograms of pangolin scales traded, from potentially up to a million pangolins between 2010 and September 2021. So for many conservationists, the tracking and tracing of pangolins cannot be more crucial. This is really exciting, you know, going to the forest and having to capture pangolins and tag them and really handle pangolins and also put them back in and monitor them for a while has been really um, exciting. Um, part of the study we conducted last year on Nigeria's role in international pangolin trafficking showed that about 0.8 million pangolins are killed in um, a little over a decade. And this is just a trade that's linked to Nigeria alone um, over this time. And so if 0.8 million pangolins are killed, which is definitely an underestimate because we, under, we made that estimate using seizure data, which as you can imagine, um, is not totally accounted for. Not everything gets affected by customs or border control agents, and some of them successfully go through. So um, that would just be about three to 20% of the overall trade. So we'll be talking about millions of pangolins um, being killed um, in um, Africa, but piggyback through Nigeria to um, Asia where pangolin skills are considered um, a panacea um, in the uh, medical industry. This pangolin is joining just a handful of others in Nigeria to have a radio monitoring tag in the wild. 
As the number of African pangolin species continues to decline, these tags offer a great opportunity to gather crucial information that will be needed to save pangolins. It's a pillar of protection in the conservation of this highly threatened species. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News, Lagos.